Hey guys, this is Sheetal here and welcome to my channel. In this channel, you find all electronics and tech related stuff. Hope you have a great time watching my videos. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use an oscilloscope. There are two types of oscilloscopes, that is a CRO and a DSO. CRO is a cathode ray oscilloscope. DSO is a digital storage oscilloscope, which is the latest one. So there are some differences between these two. Let me just show you what are those. In this video, I'll be using a dual channel DSO. It has two channels. Channel 1 is in red and the channel 2 is in yellow. Here's the channel 1 menu and this one's for channel 2. This knob is for time or seconds per division. It adjusts the horizontal sweep frequency of the oscilloscope. Here, on x-axis, each division represents the time. I'm changing, you can see it on the screen. Here is the volts per division setting of channel 1. You can see the units on the display. Each division on the screen shows the amplitude level of the signal. Now let's see the menu of the oscilloscope. This is channel 1 menu. Here is the input coupling. You can change it to DC, AC or ground. This is the channel 1 on off button. It also has a probe multiplication factor which can be set according to your probe. I'm using a 10x probe. Let me just set it to 10x. There is an option to invert your signal also. The channel 2 menu is similar to that of channel 1. You just have a look on that. There is also a math menu which performs various operations on your signals like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. There is also an FFT feature which is fast Fourier transform which is very similar to that of the spectrum analyzer. This one's the trigger menu of the DSO. You can see the details on the screen. From here you can select the type source of the horizontal sweep oscillator. There are some more options in the trigger menu, just have a look. We can measure and calculate the various parameters of the signal manually. But in this latest oscilloscope, there is a measure button which automatically displays them on the screen. So this is the measure menu which shows you RMS, frequency, peak to peak voltage of the given signal. With this feature, we can easily analyze the signals and it's time saving. Here's the oscilloscope probe. The black clip is the ground terminal and this one's the input probe. I'll be using this extension of the clip for convenience. It has a 10x and 1x switch. 1x can be used to measure very small signals with more accuracy, but here I'm using it in 10x mode. This is the other end of the probe and this connector goes to the channel 1 of the oscilloscope. Let me just connect it here. Now you can see some changes on the screen. It's because the oscilloscope has very high input impedance of several mega ohms and it's very sensitive as it catches the stray electric fields. So beginners may get confused because of this. To reduce the sensitivity and impedance, I'll show you a simple method. I have made this extra attachment to my probe using a 10 kilo ohm resistor and two crocodile clips. I'm connecting this resistor parallel to my probe. This reduces the input impedance and sensitivity of the DSO so that we can work easily without any confusion. First, let's check the DC voltage of this battery on the DSO. I'm connecting the probe to the battery. Now you can see that the display is showing in negative direction. This is because I have connected the battery in reverse polarity. Since it's DC voltage, which is a continuous signal, it will be displayed as a straight line. Here the DSO is showing 9 volts. Let me just reverse the terminals. Now you can see it in positive direction. Let's check the AC voltage of this transformer. I'll be using a 12 volts transformer. Let me connect it to the oscilloscope. You can see the sine wave on the screen and it's showing 12 volts AC. 
As the mains frequency is 50 Hz, it's displayed here on the screen. You can change the seconds per division according to your convenience. This is a function generator. I'll be using it to show you various waveforms and signals on the DSO. With this control, we can change the frequency. It generates various type of signals like DC voltage, square wave, sine wave and triangular wave. The amplitude level can be changed using this knob. Let's connect it to the oscilloscope. The sine wave is displayed on the screen. Let me just adjust it so that we can see clearly. Now we can calculate the parameters of the signal either manually or using the measure function. You can see that the frequency on the oscilloscope matches with that of the function generator and the voltage is displayed here. I'm connecting the second probe to the channel 2 of the DSO. I'm giving the same input to the second channel. You can see that both the channels are displaying identical waveforms as the same signal is fed to them. We can even change the position of the signal using these controls. I'm changing the frequency, you can see the change on the screen. I'm applying different waveforms, just have a look, all the readings are shown here. Now I'm connecting the second channel probe to the DSO's internal oscillator which is a square wave of 5 volts and 1 kHz frequency and is used as a reference signal. As the source in trigger menu is set to channel 1, let me first change it to channel 2 to make the second signal stable. The oscilloscope is showing 5 volts and 1 kHz frequency which matches with the signal. If required, triggering can also be done using an external source. There's also an auto set feature in this DSO. If the signal is completely out of range or you're confused, we can use this auto set feature which automatically chooses the best settings for the signal to be displayed. This makes your work very easy. So guys, this was the basic explanation on how to use an oscilloscope. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more new awesome videos. I'll catch you in my next video.